Hi and welcome to my playhouse. My playhouse, enterprise rack mounted servers are my passion. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel here, my playhouse, that is what I'm gonna try and present to you every week. It might be one aspect or another aspect of enterprise rack mounted servers, but I usually find a subject for every week. And I have longer projects that we work on. Right now we're working on a storage server down here with 62.5 terabytes of data on it or it will have. I recently got a request in the comments to do a overview of my data center and I thought well yeah it has been a while since I did that last so today we're just gonna look at everything from the high level looking down on everything. So why do I have all these servers? I get this question so often. I have a frequently asked thing in the description that, that tries to explain that because I get the same questions over and over again. So if you really want to know something, well, check out the frequently asked questions. And I put it there in way more details than, um, than I reply every day. So otherwise, if you ask the same questions, I'm going to point you to that. So, but making YouTube videos about servers has kind of risen to the top reason why I have all these servers. Right now, it's, it's the main purpose of it. It's, um, I make videos about it and I show it to you guys and, well, it's becoming a better and better deal. I must admit it. But let's see what everything is, shall we? I have two racks of servers here. There is, I call this rack number one and the one over here, <laughs> that's you guessed it, rack number two. I have enough equipment for at least a couple of racks more because on the shelves over here I have tons and tons of, well this is kind of old stuff but well it's on the shelf. A couple of servers up here, also over here. There's not a lot of room in my data center here. I have a major big backup unit here. We've never looked at that. Um, it's a tape backup, it's a robot. You can kind of put the tapes in here and um, well, it will pick up the tapes automatically and put it inside, but oh, never really used that for anything. Blade servers down here, just waiting for some lucky day. Blade servers, blade servers, blade servers. So I have a lot of equipment and yeah, I've been collecting for years. So let's see, up here we have some Iscosi sands and these are Dell Eculotic E400-ish. They are the two top ones here. They are all occupied with two terabyte drives. So there is like, how many is that? That's 28 two terabyte drives in those two. The bottom one here, well, it's not in use. It's off and I've been using it as kind of spare parts. There's really no reason for it to be sitting in the rack, except that I think it looks good, but um, that's just me. So most of these cases are, well, we just hit one with a disc. So 750 gigabyte drive in that one. I think, uh, that's a drive in that one as well, but okay. Then we have, um, I'm a very big Lenovo slash IBM server fan. So we have, IBM System X 3650 model 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and then we reach a model 4 down here. That's my main server right now, the most powerful one that I have. Um, ish, because it's very closely uh, matched with another one, but this is the, the most powerful one. I use this for rendering out my videos at, at present time. I have a graphics card in there and I've done multiple videos on that server so check those out. Then we have model 3, 3, 3, 3. So I have four of those. I have one on the shell as well. There, there's a model 3. That, oh, sorry, model 2. Sorry, over here is a model 3. So I have that. Then we have a Lenovo slash IBM. Uh, 3850 model 2 down here that's a quad cpu server and each of those 
CPUs have six cores. So this server has 24 real cores. Is that correct? I forget. Then we have a blade center, and this is more or less just sitting here. It's I think this is my old blade center that I have. I have another blade center over here that I regularly turn on. But before I had that, I had this one. So this is my old blade center. This is an IBM blade center model E, and this is 7U high and has room for 14 blades. And those are the blades, the same blades as there is in this blade center. But the blade center E is an older version of that. Then I have an old UPS down here. And just recently I exchanged the batteries in that one. It has been dead for years. And I've tried multiple times to get this up and running. Uh, trying to get the old batteries. I actually have some all some spare parts over here. I have a couple of IBM branded ones and on top of that I have an APC. That's not exactly the same model but the one that I'm running with now is actually an HP branded one. Uh, it's, it's right over there. It's an HP R3000XR. I have actually been thinking about replacing this unit with one of the IBM branded ones just because I have so much IBM slash Lenovo stuff. Then over here in rack number two, up at the top there is a switch. So there's a filler there. And then we have my favorite server model of all time. That's the Lenovo slash IBM X3650 model one. That's an awesome server. I have made so many videos on that server. So you can go check those out there. Uh, it's a fantastic beginner server. Um, it's a bit noisy and it uses way too much power, but it's awesome. This one, the top one, is um, equipped with two terabyte drives. So in that server, it, it has 12 terabytes of storage in there. And I have booted it on a PCI Express card with a M.2 SSD on it. So that's awesome. I uh, have a couple of more, they have smaller drives in it and I actually have, I think I have 10 of these servers not all of them are mounted here and because of the switch in the top there is a another empty plate here there is nothing in there right now so, but these plastic plates are for the airflow in the data center I don't want a lot of air going through there. Well, that's something completely different, actually. So, when we go further down, I have another switch in the back of the rack. So I have another cover plate here. And then I have a um, console. And this is an old one. Um, not one that you find regularly anymore. So, but I kind of like this one. I have a couple of others over here. They're not, mm, you know, as as good. I think they're newer than this one, but I really like this one, so I'm I'm keeping that one. And it's really good. Uh, it doubles up as a table here when I'm making videos, so that's nice. So that just pops in there, and there is a release clamp there, and it goes in. Then I have a another blade sender and this is the blade sender H it has room for 14 blades and I have a um, I have a lot of different blades I think I have six or seven different models of blades and they are spec'd out differently all of them so I have no idea what CPU and RAM there is in the different blades I will have to turn them on to find that out I just have too many servers to, to keep track of all of that. Last I counted, I had 64 servers, um, including all the things on the shelf. I counted it as 64 servers that would be working if I gave it half an hour. Um, so a blade center, some of these are really awesome. These are rather new 
E526 processors over here. Pretty cool. Yeah, this is Intel. This is a power PC. We've never seen this before. I haven't done a video on it yet, but well, I'm hoping to do that someday. This is HS21. This is HS22. This is another HS21. And this is HS23. So uh, the newest model is there. Then further down, I have a single HP server. It's the DL380 Generation 6. Probably one of the most popular HP servers ever built. So I had that one. Then I have an oldie and it's, it's just sitting here. Uh, I did a couple of videos on it and never used it for anything since. I probably should um, take it out of here. I don't think I'm gonna be using it for anything. It's, it's too old, too slow, but I just like to have it around. I think it's, it's a cool server. It's an X-Series 336. I knew that. <clears throat> then we have another server down here and this speed-wise it matches my fastest server. So this is a Lenovo X3550 Model 4. The 3550 is a 1U server where the 3650 is a 2U server. But otherwise they are pretty much uh, spec'd out the same way. I have the same processors in this one as I have in the one up there. Intel Xeon E52670. They are 2.6 GHz 8 core processors. Then the bottom down here is just disk shells. I have 24 disks here and that is 2 terabyte drives and I have 24 drives down here and that is 600 gigabyte SAS drives. Really fast 10,000 RPM SAS drive. Or are they 15,000? I forget. They are 15,000. Okay, so even faster. So on the shells here, I have a lot of, well, both servers and spare parts. Up here, I have two more Lenovo X3850s, model two, two of those. Then I have, I, we have the two, consoles here then I have a Lenovo X3650 model 1 model 2 I have a Dell uh, what is that called well it's a power edge 2950 right there I have a Sun server I have the model 3 I have a Cisco switch I have another disk cage here for for putting in drives even have I think I have 12 um, drive base thing. I have 12 of these drive bay thingies, so I would be able to expand this one down here and have another 12 drives in there. Um, I might do that, but right now I'm <clears throat> quite occupied with, with getting the 48 ones that I already have working in there. Then I have two fiber channel switches, uh, IBM branded, and I have a Another Dell server, it's a Power Edge R710. I have done a video on that one as well. Down here I have a HP workstation that was sent to me by Christoph in uh, Germany um, as a gift. Thank you very much. We did do a video on that. Um, I am not sure what I am gonna do with that, but it has two nice Intel Xeon 53 something processors in it. It's kind of cool. Then I have a disk shelf for old compact server um, right here. It's it's old SCSI drive. Then we have a couple of fiber network switches. I believe they are 2 gigabits, not really usable nowadays. Then I have my first storage server over here. Uh, we, I have done videos on that. It's rather old now, but I do have a film company and when we were going to record a full feature film I bought this one to keep all the recorded data on so for a while this was running it also has a couple of old Xeon processors in it oh I forgot this one this Compaq DL380 generation 1 so it's the very first one of these and it's way older than the generation 1 of these so Compact slash HP has been um, producing this model longer, um, the Compact Proliant. 
this actually has a couple of Pentium trees inside 923 megahertz I believe so moving over here we have an HP server another one this is also a DL380 but this is a generation 4 and at the end we have another Dell server um, power it's 2950 so well that's that shell then I have a lot of spare parts I have RAM I have CPUs I have hot drives I have different PCI cards I have a whole case of network cards more hard drives even more hard drives well we saw this this is blade servers more blade servers this is some kind of do-it-yourself server we never had this open i don't think i'm ever gonna be using it for anything and i have another one here also something um do-it-yourself server or at some point it has been it's branded in some kind so there's that more blade servers couple of ssds that um does has never worked we have a tower of cd roms here that's from back in the days when not all computers had cd roms and you could actually put this on your network and mount a cd rom to your pcs and we have my film light we have the the big dell um, it's a Dell Powerwall 136T. I believe it has LTO2 drives in it. More boxes down here. Uh, cables. Oh, what's in this one? Oh, Scotty, old Scotty stuff. Blade sender, spare parts. Uh, this one is um, just full of cloth and it's um, to put. And it's meant to put inside the air intake when it becomes too cold outside. So um, I'm keeping that around. Also, I have a Synology box here, uh, where I'm, that's actually my backup for all the films that I do. I have one at my apartment in Aarhus and I have this one. So I move data forth and back so to keep all my videos safe. Well, if you follow my channel, you know that I live in Denmark. And in Denmark, most of the year, cooling all of this server equipment is not a problem. You um, more or less just open the window, so that, that would be good. But as all rack servers, they suck in the air from the front and blow the hot or heated air out the back. I have kind of made it so that I don't mix up the air. So around the data center here, I have put foam that separate the front and the back of the data center. Even in here, there is, is foam that makes sure that the air does not blend. So, so the hot air that goes to the back of the server, well, it doesn't go um, around the front and get sucked in again. So uh, to get back there, I remove these pieces of foam. Actually, often it's enough to remove the two bottom ones. And I put those aside. And then I climb in here, which is just big enough. And I have a couple of automatic lights that turns on in here. So when I get in here, the lights will turn on. So there is not a lot of room here. I don't know how much this is, but it's not a lot. And yes, Cable management is not my thing. This is the internet connection coming in and it goes up into this switch. And it goes into this switch, right there. Uh, that's one of the switches. This one has a couple of 10 gig connections. That's why it's around. Down here we have my main switch. This one is a Cisco Catalyst 3560X series. POE plus and down here we have another switch and this one is a it's also kind of a Cisco because Cisco bought Linksys at some point and this is an SRW 2048 and this is a 
48 port 1 gigabit switch. Up here I have a fan blower that blows the air out of the data center from the back here so that the hot air is well sucked out instead of going around the front and uh, mixing with the cold air and it goes out that way. On the side I have these long power strips. They go all the way down and there is three lines into them. So each of them has three faces available. These goes over to the one on the other side. Oh, there's not a lot of room back here. But there is also power indicators on them. That shows how much power that I'm using. Oh, this one is not showing anything. So probably I'm not drawing any power from that unit. Down here, I'm drawing a little bit. So just making sure that the plugs are in good. Well, it really sucks filming back there because there is absolutely no space to work on. So we don't go there very often, but well, it's it's there and I go there. So yeah, there is that. The hot air comes out the server room here. The server room is in here and the hot air goes out here. And this thing is a, well, it's a, it's a silencer. So to not make as much noise, but well, the hot air is transported through this line in here. Um, so in here, I push the hot air out here into my living quarters because, well, it does become a little bit hotter than normal air. I'm guessing 25 degrees here. So it's, it's not a lot, but it helps, especially during the winter. So my playhouse is mainly about me playing around with servers and showing you what I'm doing and working on projects, disk drives, RAIDs, putting in memory, memory balancing, exchanging processes, a lot of good stuff. Um, sometimes I do other projects. I like batteries, I like heating, I like green energy, I like gardening. I, I do all kind of stuff. And sometimes I film it because, well, some of you might like it, but, but the main thing for this channel is really the servers. So if you're the kind of person that would like to get in on some of this and get your own server up and running, well, you might want to see my videos. It's really not that expensive. These older servers, often they're really just being given away, like 20 euros, 20 dollars, I don't know. And there is still a lot of fun in a server like that. So, uh, well, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my playhouse here. And have a really nice day. Bye-bye.